Yeah. Uh, today I have a topic that uh, uh, we didn't speak too much in our the middle way community. Uh, but I have a, a very uh, fortunate time uh, to be invited to uh, to teach this topic to the, the local New Yorker that they want to hear this. I know about this, uh, but we didn't expand too much in our community. So today, I think it's a good time for uh, reviewing this uh, important teaching of the Buddha called Seven Factors of Awakening in Daily Life for uh, some high people or Buddhist friend. Uh, you might view well, my family has a chanting uh, called Pochong chanting. Yeah, during some time they do some uh, merit activity. They do uh, this chanting a lot <laughs> for good health, for prosperity. Uh, today we will dive deeper into this ancient wisdom and how we turn it alive in our daily life. Yeah, this is uh, seven factors of awakening. Sata Poshanka. Yeah, Sata means seven. Yeah, Poshanka, it comes from two terms. Uh, body, yeah, like a poti, is like enlightenment or awake, awakening. And Anka is like a factor. So Sata Poshanka is a seven factors of awakening. It's combined of these uh, seven factors. And the first one is uh, sati, mindfulness. The second one, dhamma, vijaya, investigation. Uh, number three is uh, viriya, effort. Number four, piti, joy. And number five, pasati, tranquility. Number six, samadhi, concentration. And the last one, number seven, upekha, yeah, equanimity. As you learn Buddha teaching, you might see different terms uh, in different places, but it's nice to have this come together. And we're going to see how it actually flow when we meditate or when we live our life with mindfulness, with the Dhamma, how it actually flow. Uh, before we, we get into the detail and how it's connected in our daily life, I would like to I uh, shared an interesting uh, aspect of this ancient wisdom, Sataposhanka. Yeah, if you will uh, look into the like, oh, what is the original source? Yeah, this is the book, uh, Pali Canon, in the Sangyutta Nika, and the connected discourses of the Buddha. Uh, last year, around June, July, I have a fortunate time to meet in person with Buk Biku Bodhi and the translator himself <laughs> and I get a very interesting uh, insight. Uh, I got his email. When I have anything, a question, I will ask him <laughs> that, oh, what do you actually mean by that part, this part? But he did an excellent job to... to uh, translate from a thousand years old to the modern language. So in Sata Poshanka, Saint Factor of Awakening, uh, this is the important teaching lead to enlightenment, but there are uh, several parts in Pali Canon that touch on this uh, teaching. The interesting one is uh, Buddha, when he had a chance to visit uh, the two enlightener, like a venerable Mahakasapa, who are the senior monk who take care of the Sangha after the Buddha passing. He's like a head monk after the Buddha passing, Venerable Mahakasapa. And Venerable Mahamokhalana, he's like a, the left hands of the Buddha, who excellent in psychic power. There's a time that both monks, uh, very ill, like a very serious illness, Buddha visited both monks and he recommended that uh, red review uh, Sataposhanka during your sickness. 
like like a chanting and reviewing, and this will give a good energy for your recovery. And both of them get better <laughs> quickly after the chanting. And there's a moment that the Buddha himself gets sick also. So he asked another monk called Venerable Mahajunta that, oh, can you recite that teaching uh, back to me? Interesting. <laughs> Buddha used this to help others, and then he used it to heal himself also during a chanting. In Thailand and many Buddhist uh, countries, sometimes they do a uh, good energy work. They, they use this uh, poshanka, like a chant before meditation also. To put it into the modern perspective that how come this Dhamma heal? <laughs> yeah, if you uh, study more and you will see how physical health, mental health <laughs> is interconnected. Yeah. And it's not something like a uh, magical from the sky. <laughs> it's just how you connect to that ancient chanting and feel good energy. And it brings peace, it brings tranquility, it brings stillness to your mind, and it generates the good energy that your body will heal, your body feel better. Uh, I think there's a kind of uh, Sata Pashanka for uh, health, and I think that's it's a good thing, and you will easily find it on YouTube. Uh, you just type Sata Pashanka chanting, and you will hear what what uh, the Buddha recommend the monks to to recite and review the Dharma. Yeah, I think this is interesting and would like to share with you that it's good for your health. Another insight into this teaching that uh, very useful, it comes from uh, Visuddhimagga, the path of purification. Yeah, it's a collection of Buddha teaching on meditation practice collected by Buddha Gosa. Yeah, this is about uh, 500 years after the Buddha passing. So Buddha Gosa, he kind of pioneer from oral tradition that's talk into the wooden scripture. And not only pioneer that, but he select but he has special interest in meditation practice. So he select different part in the scripture and then combine into one book about meditation. Yeah. Uh, if you're quite aware that there are three canon, yeah, we call Tipitaka, like a three Baptist. <laughs> because in those days when they combine the teaching, they put that wooden scripture in the Baptist. Yeah, oh, this is a discipline basket about how we eat like a, uh, the principle we live together as a community. Discipline basket, and then it comes uh, sutta. Like, oh, these are different teaching of the Buddha in different times, uh, sutta basket. And then there's a, a bidama, yeah, like a metaphysical teaching about nirvana, about state of the mind. Buddha Kosa, he is a central monk in that movement. Yeah, like a very important monk. Uh, you find his story in uh, internet and story. He touched on Bo Poshanka himself, Buddha Gosa, in Visuddhimagga. And he uh, summarized that if we're going to attain absorption in Pali Kaushana, which means a deep state, of meditation. Like that today, if uh, some of you meditate and you feel like you're not there, like a, your body disappear, or you feel like, wow, you're becoming one with your breath, a kind of a feeling of epiphany or intuitive uh, reaction in your body. And that is the, um, the beginning of jhana, like you absorb into that state of Dharma. And Buddha Gosa, he 
identify that, oh, in these seven factors of Oshanga, strong mindfulness is needed throughout all the practice. Yeah, factor number one, we use it along the way. But when your mind is too loose, when the mind is slack or overlapness of energy, then we should develop three factors beginning with investigation of state. So he recommend when you're too loose, use investigation, effort, and joy to bring your state of mind to heighten, to be more heightened. Yeah, like a more awareness. But when the mind is agitated, like an over energeticness, then choose develop another three factors, which is tranquility, concentration, and equanimity. Yeah. So this is another uh, aspect to look at for Shanka that very practical, very useful, that we use it when we practice to lose this three factor, too tight this three factor. Uh, in reality, when we meditate, it happens <laughs> quickly. Uh, we need to be aware. Yeah, we need to be aware. And uh, slowly and gently, uh, I recommend that during meditation practice, uh, do not try to analyze too much. Yeah, just uh, sati and sabai as we were guided, comfort and consciousness. Yeah, if it's too tight, need to be more comfortable. Yeah, if it's too loose, you need more consciousness. You need more awareness. That's the main direction. But when we uh, review after, yeah, we can see how the seven factor work during that meditation practice time. Yeah. Uh, hope we can have some uh, moment after my talk, we can discuss on this seven factors of awakening. To apply these seven factors of awakening in daily life, we have two times to think about it. The first time is close eye poshanka. It's like when you close eyes and meditate, <laughs> and then the open eye poshanka. That when you open your eye and you go through different stages of that dharma, yeah. Uh, this is how our teacher Long Pao Dhammasio guides us that your practice will work the best when you do it two times, only two times. <laughs> Yeah, during the day, the first time when you close your eye, the second time when you open your eyes. Yeah, it means any hour that you're quite aware, any moment, be with the Dharma. And that how Dharma will work the best, that we do not just practice Dharma at one moment and then we jump to something else and we, we leave the Dharma behind. Because Dhamma will protect us from any scenario, from any situation when we are one with the Dhamma. So close eye and open eye. Yeah, we need both of that. Let's have some review on each one. Yeah, close eye for Shankar. Uh, let's review one by one that how we actually use this when we meditate. Let's imagine you meditate at home or anywhere by yourself. And during that time, you have some uh, concern, you have some worry about something. It might be about your business, it might be about your parents, your kid, you know, any concern. And we know uh, this state of mind of worry and concern is not helpful, it's not healthy. Yeah, like Einstein said, you cannot use the mind that create the problem to solve the problem. You need to shift your state of mind to somewhere better condition and use that 
heightened state of mind look back to the mind that create the problem and you find a better solution. So when you practice meditation and you know that, oh, I need to shift this state of mind, it's not good. You start, relax your body, have a mindfulness or state throughout your body. And then your worry comes. Yeah, your worry come, your concern come. During that moment, yeah, you can have Dhamma Vijaya, yeah, investigation. Just watch it. Hmm, wow, it's running around <laughs> with that concern and worry. And as you practice and you learn with the middle way, let the bird fly, let the bird fly. Uh, with mindfulness, you know the state of the mind right now is not good enough to fix a problem. Sati is very important that if we are too emotional or too concerned, we don't see the truth. The truth is we are not ready to fix a problem. So we have mindfulness and then we gently aware yeah let them go yeah consciously or logically right now is not good so i will meditate and go beyond conscious level i go subconscious yeah i fix things from deeper level it's like the iceberg yeah when we not feel right or we have fear or concern, we cannot fix that problem. So with that gentleness of being aware that, yeah, later, not now, you let that concern fly away. And then you put more uh, virya effort. You can pop up something bright, you can have your mantra, or you can just maintain stillness and being aware that, yeah, there's still concern, there's still worry out there, but you do not let them to take the main state. Yeah, you can go. i talk to you later. <laughs> I know that I'm, I'm not ready to talk to you now. Yeah, and with that virya, that you continue with the mantra, with the stillness, you start to feel pity or joy. Wow, I'm free. I'm free from that concern. I'm free from that trouble. Even you don't have solution yet, but you feel good <laughs> that you are not uh, negatively influenced by that worry and concern. Then you feel joy. If you are still and peaceful, that joy of pity will open a channel to pasati or tranquility. It's like um, happiness and joy gravitate towards the center of the body. Uh, I'll put it that way, that when you feel good, uh, happy, uh, our master, Long Paul Damasya, uses a lot. Think about merit. Think about goodness. Like it shifts your attention from negative thing or worry thing to something wholesome. So piti lead to pasati, tranquility. It's joyful, but it's the not uh, overly uh, joyful. It's joyful with peacefulness. And with pasati, your mind become more uh, aware of your inner essence. Then samadhi start to be more grounded, concentration. Yeah, from number five until to number six, uh, you can imagine the pa the piece of paper and the magnifying glass. Yeah, if you remember, I use that a lot. That when you quite aware, mindful, it's like oh, you put your magnifying glass on the point and stay longer. The little dot come up, and that is concentration. And when you continue with concentration, number seven, 
you feel ubeka, a sense of equanimity, a sense that, yeah, everything will be fine. <laughs> everything will be okay. Now I see the Dharma. Now I see the reality that yeah, that the way it is. It's impermanent. Things change. So we will fix. <laughs> we will fix it. <laughs> because we understand the nature of it. That it's like this. It comes and goes. It's go bad. It can come back to be better or good. Or if it's good, it might become bad in some moment. And we cannot really control it 100%. We can guide it into the better direction, but we have no 100% control. And then you feel, wow, peaceful, neutrality. Sometime later, uh, you practice and experience it, you know what I'm talking. In that moment of equanimity, the answer just come up. Yeah, that, oh, so simple, I, I forget that I can do like this to fix that problem. And it's like the inner faucet that it shift your state of mind to the heightened one. You allow your mind to expand and then some solution or some aspect that you forget, it just come up that you can fix it this way. And you follow well? Both sides for Shankar. Uh, can you tie number seven? I would like to check a bit. You're still uh, aware <laughs> of that factors with me? Yeah, you can tie number seven. If you really, oh, yeah, it happened. I experienced that seven stages before, but I didn't know that uh, it's light up like this. As I mentioned, the next time you meditate, uh, you do not, Try to, oh, this state is sati, this state, <laughs> no need. Yeah. Our uh, subconscious level is very advanced. Yeah, this is too rough. Yeah, in that state, you don't need to uh, pop up this during meditation. We use it after. We use it to reveal that if some meditation uh, it's not very uh, wholesome or not complete. Maybe uh, some factors is not smooth or we wanting experience too much or we too loose. Yeah, we can use this back to review. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, a lot of number seven. Thank you. Yeah, that for Poshanka. And then there's an open eye for Shankar. Without close eye for Shanka, open eye is challenging. It's difficult to have open eye for Shanka. Uh, like um, if you're gonna drive the car uh, to somewhere you need gasoline or you need some electric power to make sure that you're gonna run <laughs> in your speed. With close eye for Shankar, it's like we put that gasoline or electric power into our engine, which is our body. With that, there's a possibility that we can bring that uh, awakening moment into our daily life. So I recommend every day, if you can, uh, first thing first, shower your body, shower your mind before doing something else. Yeah, we need to fill up our tank, our body with awakening factor, awakening power. Yeah, now is open eye. Yeah, when you practice well, close eye for Shankar, uh, at least one or twice a day. And I highly recommend do it before you move to do something rough. You do something uh, hectic. You need stillness to to be in a, a good con controlling spot of the possibility. Again, we cannot 100% control, but we can give some direction yeah, to it in the, in the better way. Imagine 
in your office or maybe uh, maybe at home with some uh, conversation and it start to get more heated <laughs> yeah have a different idea no no this is the way we're gonna make uh, profit this is the way we're gonna make it better and you start to feel some negative energy you start to feel rising ego in the room in the room if you are mindful enough <laughs> you can mm, maybe i can talk less in this moment <laughs> a little bit to help more mindfulness sati first and then you can investigate oh what's going on oh this person uh have a good idea but uh, he missed some important part and you don't need to jump quickly to that to speak or anything just slow down and then you put some effort that okay be still observe what's going on um i experienced this at different time when i do my peace work that i travel to different places they have different ideas about how to do things i listen and i'm peaceful and then i put my effort not to speak <laughs> Yeah, it's not the right time to speak right now. Uh, subconsciously, you can feel the energy that, oh, the energy is not right. Let them, you know, like a, come out. Let them <laughs> do this and do that and let them uh, let their ideas come. And in that sense of sati, dhamma, vijaya and vijaya, you feel good that, wow, I can hold my response. I can be neutral to see. And when we listen, we really listen to understand, not listen to respond. Yeah. To really understand. Like a reason, like a, yeah. You don't have ego. You don't have any voice in the head. Just fully listen. And you feel good. You feel pity. And once you have that pity, and tranquility will follow. I feel good and you feel a sense of calmness. Uh, Sometimes uh, I just have uh, myself experience that, oh, uh, we can do it this way. We can do it this way. <laughs> and then concentration becomes strong that, okay, uh, I will be calm and focused and this will be my contribution to that meeting, but I'm not in a hurry. It's like a calm but focus. And number seven, in that sense of understanding, feel joyful with self-control, have calmness in the moment, and you feel a sense of equanimity. Uh, Sometimes and many times I experience that, that why I'm watching, I'm listening, and then I see that, oh, it should go this way. And I don't take it personal that who say that, but I just try to catch the, the content. Sometimes someone in the room speak what I'm thinking. Then I, I, I say nothing. And oh, okay. That is the answer. And that person also, my fool like me, <laughs> and did not get into the fight. And I have a sense that I don't need to say. I don't need to talk. It's done. Yeah. And we don't have a feeling of, oh, I need to say something. or No. Uh, my contribution is calmness in the room. <laughs> Still net. Uh, you might be curious that, oh, Mang Burin, when they talk, it's fast. Yeah, how you can have these seven stages, our state of mind. All these uh, seven stages, like when we meditate, it happened fast also. So during the talk, it actually keep comfortable feeling and conscious like when you meditate. And when you feel something, sense something, it just happened uh, quickly. But if any time that you have open eye poshanka and it work, you can review, review back to that moment that, oh, that is a different factors. 
that I use during my open eye, like a meditative state of mind and have the best response, the best contribution, or even be still at this moment is your contribution. Yeah, true. Okay, so uh, that's some insight about the seven factors of awakening in daily life. Uh, I hope it inspires you to practice more and let this awakening moment that you can be there, understand yourself and find peace for yourself and then find peace in the room anywhere that need more directions and peace. Uh, good.